Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to take a look into Zillow's interactive floor plans. So sometime back in 2019, Zillow launched their 3D Home app, which allowed users to create virtual tours for their real estate listings using a 3D camera or an iPhone for absolutely free. I've made a video on this previously that I definitely recommend watching that I'll link to up on the screen right now because it contains pertinent information to this video that is useful. Zillow has now expanded on what they offer to now include an option for interactive floor plans. The interactive floor plan is a nice addition to the virtual tour because it allows the end user to view the floor plan alongside the virtual tour so they can get a very good idea of how the home is laid out while also improving the ease of navigation. You can click around on the floor plan to jump to any room you want to see instantly without having to go through the house from point to point to get from one area across the house to another, making the navigation much faster and much easier. This is similar to the service iGuide provides, which I've also made a video on that I'll link to up on the screen right now. The only difference being that Zillow's is absolutely free and iGuide is a paid service. Zillow also provides a JPEG of the floor plans, which agents can include in their listing photos on MLS or wherever else to share with potential buyers, which is also very useful. The floor plan includes room dimensions, which I will get into later in this video on how accurate they are, but does not include much else such as fixed furniture, such as where cabinets, showers, or vanities are located. This floor plan that Zillow provides is akin to Cubicasa's free floor plan option that they recently released. I've also made a video on that that I'll link to up on the screen as well. But if you or your client are looking for a more detailed floor plan, then I would highly recommend Cubicasa's upgraded floor plan, which will only cost you about $15. That is my go-to floor plan, and Cubicasa's system and product are top-notch. As I mentioned in my previous Zillow virtual tour video, their product is not of the highest quality, but it is free and there are some advantages to it. For instance, you will definitely get a higher quality virtual tour with a service like Matterport, and you'll also get a higher quality floor plan from a service like Cubicasa. The advantage of these Zillow products is that it will boost the visibility of your agent's listings on the Zillow platform, making it potentially get considerably more views and stand out from the other listings. With Zillow being the leading online real estate marketplace, your clients are going to want any advantage they can get on there, which is good ammo for you to help sell this upgrade to them and make some extra money. Best of all, if you already own a 3D camera, then this is no cost to you whatsoever, just a small investment in time. All right, now let me take you on site so I can go over a bit about how these are created using the Zillow 3D Home app, which you can download for free from your phone's app store. All right guys, so I'm here on site at a shoot in a vacant house, pardon the echo, uh, but I'm gonna briefly take you through the process of creating a Zillow interactive floor plan slash virtual tour. So if you've created virtual tours with Zillow in the past but haven't yet tried the interactive floor plan option, the process is basically the same except for a couple additional steps that I'll cover in this video. And I'll also brush up on just how to do the basic floor plan slash virtual tour process since they're created simultaneously using the same equipment and the same method. So one big difference between the virtual tour only option and the interactive floor plan slash virtual tour option is that you need a 3D camera such as this, the Ricoh Theta Z1. To do the interactive floor plan, you cannot use an iPhone to create it. You can, however, use an iPhone to create the virtual tour only option. I kind of like this because most real estate agents, for instance, aren't going to own a Ricoh Theta Z1 or a 3D camera. So that's going to make them want to reach out to a professional photographer like you or I and hire them to do the job because they have the proper equipment. And this segues into the last thing I want to say, which is you can create the virtual tour by itself, but you cannot create the floor plan by itself. That automatically comes along with the virtual tour. All right, so without further ado, let's open the app and we'll get set up here and get started. All right, so I'm going to open the 3D Home app. And here you have your two choices, which I was just talking about, which is floor plan and virtual tour using Ricoh Theta SC2, V, Z1, or X. So those are your options as far as 3D cameras or you can do a virtual tour, which as you can see, you can use an iPhone camera or Reiko Theta SC2 V Z1 or X. So we're gonna choose floor plan and virtual tour. We can type an address here uh, or pick it from the list. All right, now it's gonna ask you to add a floor. So we're just doing floor one here. Is this floor completely above ground? Yes, it is. Here it gives you tips, turn on the lights. Turn off all fans, TVs, and any other moving objects. Remove distractions. Here's some pointers on planning your route. Start from outside the front door, plan a route through the home, connecting all rooms, hallways, garages, and other spaces. And 
put your camera at about five feet of height, which I have mine set at already. Maintain line of sight. All right. All right, so the first thing we wanna click on is floor plan setup. And here you'll see an explanation of what floor plan setup is. So basically what this floor plan setup shot is, is a calibration for the camera by placing an object in the shot that the camera knows exactly what the size of that object is. So then it can calibrate the rest of the shots that it takes and therefore calculate accurate size measurements of each room. So Zillow offers what they call a marker for this process. You can fill out the form on their website and they'll mail you one for free, but it basically just looks like a white sheet of paper with like a QR code thing on it. But optionally, they say you can just use an eight and a half and 11 piece of paper, which is what I have here. And that's what we're gonna be using in this video. So the basic idea is by placing this eight and a half and 11 piece of paper in the frame in this calibration shot, the camera and the app will know that this is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, and therefore it will be able to use that information to accurately measure out the rooms. Now we'll see how accurate this is. I also brought a tape measure with me today. I haven't tested this yet myself, but I'm going to today. I'm gonna to measure a couple of the rooms, and when we get the floor plan back, we'll see how accurate it actually is. All right, so here you see I have my first shot set up by the front door, and as per the instructions, they request that you put your piece of paper or marker on the floor, between one and a half and three feet away from the tripod. So that's where it is approximately. You don't need to like measure this with a tape measure or like be super accurate with this, it just needs to be in the ballpark. So we have our marker set here and now let's take this first shot for this calibration. All right, so now I'm gonna take this floor plan setup shot. All right, so now you can see we have our floor plan setup shot complete. And you can see also in the top right corner how there's an eyeball with a slash through it. This automatically hides it from the tour. So by default, it's hidden from the tour and it won't appear in your tour. So you won't have like a piece of paper on the floor in your virtual tour. So now all we have to do is just go into the room and I'm picking up the piece of paper off the floor so we don't need that anymore. And now we'll just have to do that shot one more time as a real part of the virtual tour slash floor plan. So we just hit new room or area and we can just take this shot again. So now you'll see it asks you which area you just captured. So I'm gonna say foyer, although it's not much of a foyer, but, and I'm gonna choose foyer. And now we can move on to our next shot. All right, so now basically all we have to do is just scan the rest of the house and get all our data for our virtual tour and our floor plan. But just one thing to keep in mind when scanning is that you wanna maintain visual line of sight between your scans. So since we just did one here in the foyer area, I'll probably do one right here, even though it's very close by, just because I have to junction down this hallway at some point and connect it in there. So again, I need that line of sight. So doing a scan here will be able to enable me to have line of sight and connect to that scan there. When you're in a big room like this, you may only need to do one scan here, you know, one scan over there to junction to go around because the dining room wraps around over here. So, you know, we just need line of sight between each point. And it's always a good idea to just to scan in when you're going into a bedroom or something, just to scan like within the threshold of the door. I always do one sort of like in there to connect the outer area with the inner area, just so you have some overlap. So those are just general rules of thumb and good ideas for practicing this for when you're doing your virtual tours. So again, I'm gonna do my second scan here. So I visual line of sight down the hallway and then visual line of sight into this room. So now I need to clear out of the room. By the way, you have to get out of the room when you scan so you're not in any of the shots. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so I'm out of view of the camera and now you can see that view down the hallway there. And I'm just going to take this shot here. And for this, I'm gonna choose living room because that's what that is. So now I'm just gonna add panorama to living room because I need to do another scan in the middle of this room. All right, so now for my next shot, I'm gonna add into this living room and I'm gonna do one just really basically in the middle of this room here. And that's all I'm gonna need to really do here in this big room is just one scan right in the middle. All right, so I've cleared out of the room now. I'm just gonna take this shot really quick. Now from this point, I have visual line of sight into the dining room over here. So now I can just move the camera right into the middle of the dining room area here and take another shot from here. So you get the basic idea. And I went over this in my previous video about doing 3D virtual tours with Zillow. So I don't wanna like beat a dead horse here or anything, but uh, now I'm just gonna scan the rest of the house and we'll take this back to the computer and take a look at what we got. All right guys, so now let's hop on the computer and take a look at what the finished product looks like with Zillow's interactive floor plan. So when you log into your Zillow 3D account, uh, here is the, uh, the scan we did with our floor plan available. You'll see that indicated here at the bottom. So, so this is what it, 
will look like to you know the end user on Zillow. Uh, you know, here we have the virtual tour here where you can you know navigate here into the living room, you know, and just navigate through the house and you know spin around 360. So this is basically what the virtual tour looks like and would look like too if you didn't have the floor plan, but obviously here on the right we have a floor plan included, the interactive floor plan, uh, which is cool. So like while you're navigating the house, you can glance over to the side here and look at the floor plan and see how the home is laid out. You know, you can see all these points and jump around on the floor plan. So I wanted to visit this bedroom. I can just click right here on this bedroom. Now I'm in this bedroom here. So it's very easy to, you know, hop around and, you know, to other rooms that you might want to see quickly. Uh, so it's just a nicer, you know, navigation. If you want to view the full floor plan, you can click on this floor plan option here, which will bring, you know, the whole floor plan up. And again, you can, you know, navigate here, you know, I want to go to this bathroom. Now I'm in this bathroom. So, you know, just, you know, nice navigation here. So that's the interactive floor plan in a nutshell. And I think it's a cool addition to the virtual tour. I think it adds something for sure. So as I mentioned earlier, Zillow also provides a JPEG version of the floor plan, which they email you when the floor plan has been rendered. So let's take a look at that now. And we'll also take a look at the room dimensions and see how accurate they are. So as you can see here on the screen, this is the JPEG version of the floor plan that Zillow provides. Again, there's no fixed furniture like in the kitchen here uh, on Cuba Casa. You know, you would see the cabinets and everything in here uh, if you got the upgraded floor plan. Same with the bathroom as far as like the vanity and all that. So fixed furniture is in here. But we have the room dimensions here. Uh, so let's take a look at these bedrooms because I measured each three of these bedrooms. So let's see how my measurements compare to what Zillow came up with and we'll see how accurate these measurements actually are. All right, so first let's take a look at this back bedroom where Zillow says it was 11 foot six inches by 11 foot six inches. My measurements with the tape measure were 11 foot five inches by 11 foot four inches. So both those measurements are within an inch or two. So to me, that's pretty much as good as you're gonna get. You know, my measurement might have had a margin of error. You know, I was trying to measure beyond like the, the baseboards and everything. So like my measurements aren't spot on perfect. I was trying to like get within an inch or so of accurate. So, you know, these are pretty darn accurate. It looks like at least in this bedroom. So let's take a look at the next one and see how accurate that one is. All right, so this middle bedroom here, uh, 11 foot six, so 11 foot six again, same size as this bedroom. I had 11 foot four inches by 11 foot four inches. So again, within a couple inches, you know, I think this is accurate. I would say it's pretty dead on accurate. All right, so let's take a look at this last bedroom here, which is 11 foot 10 inches by 15 foot seven inches. So this is a bigger room here. So maybe that will have an effect on the accuracy. My measurements for this final bedroom were 15 foot nine inches by 11 foot seven inches. So again, that's, you know, that's within three inches on this measurement and within two inches on this measurement. So I have the measurements on my phone here. That's why I have it out. Uh, but you know, these are pretty accurate and are about as good as what I've seen from La Cuba Casa and stuff. So I would say similar accuracy to that, but this doesn't provide uh, approximate square footage, which Cuba Casa does, or you can't get gross livable area, which C Cuba Casa can provide. So, you know, Cuba Casa is obviously a better option, more detailed and you know more information provided this is pretty darn basic just you know your basic layout with room dimensions all right guys so that's the zillow interactive floor plan option that's included in the zillow 3d home app i hope you found this video helpful if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already i really appreciate your support also take a look down in the description below i have links to sky replacement pack that i provide i have links to Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets. I have links to gear I recommend. I also have a link to my Patreon page, which gives you access to my private Discord group. So a lot of good stuff down there. Please check that out. Thanks again so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.